Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining our webinar. Uh, my name is Robert Cummings, uh, and I am here to help uh, navigate you through our overview and admissions webinar here for the MIT Supply Chain Management Program. Uh, with me, I have uh, our Executive Director, Dr. Maria Jesus Sines, and together we will um, go over this presentation for the next 30 minutes and then have um, a section for a Q&A with some of our current students. Uh, so with that, I will jump right into the presentation overview uh, and then give Maria a chance to um, tell, tell us a little bit more about supply chain management. Um, so for today, we will uh, first cover the topic of what is supply chain management? Why, um, why is it such a pressing issue now uh, in the world? Then we will highlight some of the professional outcomes from our program here and what we have to offer uh, through our program overview. Uh, finally, we'll cover the application process and all the uh, information needed for applicants to begin their process with us. And then finally, um, the major selling points of MIT, the MIT experience uh, and learning from our students. Great. So with that, I will turn it over to Maria. Uh, hello, everybody. So thank you very much for being with us today. We are really excited about this new um, academic year and this new cohort that is being shaped today. So actually, this is our first kind of uh, activity uh, for, for welcoming the, uh, all the prospects uh, students. So really glad to be here. And then we want to, to share a lot of good news with you, a lot of excitement, uh, outcomes, and benefits of, of getting engaged with, with our program. My name is Maria Jesus, I am director of the MIT um, Supply Chain Management Master Program and also director of the MIT Digital Supply Chain Transformation Laboratory doing research on that. So we wanted to start now with, I mean, why supply chain management? What supply chain management means and what is today? And actually I am sure that then you are motivated about the topic, this is why you are here, but for good reasons, right? So then supply chain has been in the news in the recent uh, year, uh, months, I mean, considering several kind of problems in the supply chain, several reasons why, I mean, the products are not at the right time, in the right place, at the right price. And this is what supply chain is doing, is helping to connect different stakeholders who are playing in end-to-end -end value chain uh, in order to come in from customers, uh, I'm sorry, suppliers of suppliers downstream to customers of customers. So here we have in the in the in this slide different reasons with problems with containers, price with the um, with the energy, uh, all these logistics infrastructures that have been um, hit by the uh, I mean, worldwide problems today. So this is why supply chain is famous, and this is why supply chain is a hot topic today. And then uh, also in terms of the job market. Um, then it's a hot topic, and then we will share the results about why supply chain is hot topic for our program as well. So then uh, if we go to the next slide, then we understand, again, first, what is supply chain? Why supply chain is so important? Then how do you approach these uh, challenges in supply chain? Doing applied research. And this is what we are doing in all these laboratories that then um, are part of our program. So all these structures of our programs, uh, including myself, we work intensively in doing applied research in different areas of supply chain. Um, here it is by, by uh, I mean, a strict um, alphabetical order, but then, I mean, fortunately for me, my, my lab is the first one, digital supply chain transformation, but we are working in food and retail operations, freight lab, humanitarian, you hope, some of you are doing interested in that. Last mile delivery with Mega City Logistics Lab is doing a great job all over the world, working with great companies, sustainability, innovation, resilience, hot topic today as well, and uh, visual analytics lab. So you can go to our, um, all the website of all these labs in order to understand the latest, um, I mean, research, latest publications, in order to understand uh, what we are doing and uh, how we are shaping the impact in different areas of supply chain. So also uh, where, I mean, books that uh, Professor, Sheppy ha Pro Professor Sheppy has published uh, recently, but also, I mean, along the, 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 the I mean, the evolution of, of supply chain. 
So this is how we understand supply chain, doing applied research that we bring into our lectures, our classes. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, next slide. So yeah, Robert, go ahead. Yes, so I'm happy to introduce our professional uh, outcomes uh, from MIT SCM uh, and basically all of the professional portfolio and development that we offer here. Um, so kicking us off, uh, professional development, what does that include for us? Um, so you can see here a comprehensive list of the services that we offer to our students um, to get you going on your professional career. So that includes resume and cover letter review um, from two months before you even step foot on campus, um, access to our uh, company recruiters, uh, and really a personal assessment of your talents so that you can have a better understanding going into job interviews. What are your highlights? What do you need to work on? Um, that's a very critical element of our, of our program. We also offer uh, individual career coaching, interview preparation with our team, um, Justin Snow and Len Morrison. Um, so they are instrumental in helping you gain um, your next job. Uh, participation in all of our info sessions, resume drops and interviews um, with exclusive SCM alumni connections that we built and fostered throughout the past 25 years of our program. Uh, and then of course, there's the MIT larger network of career advising and professional development here. Uh, things such, such as the incubation hubs for entrepreneurship, um, startups and VCs, lots of things are built, uh, come out of MIT. So you'll get access to that um, larger community experience as well. Uh, and then finally, of course, the, the job postings themselves will come through. Uh, and all of this will lead to our next topic that Maria will highlight. Yeah, all this effort, um, um, I mean, have a great impact on the job market. Not only because supply chain is a hot topic, but also because our students are so great. And then we have these figures that we are so proud. Uh, so these are figures of the class of 2022. It means that those that graduated uh, last uh, um, uh, spring, the end of spring. So this is the average base salary that is increased with, uh, as you can see on your right, on bonus and stock, similar, I mean, um, so typical a kind of overall package in a job offer. So we are very proud to say that 97% of job seeking students, uh, they received an offer by uh, graduation, which means before leaving a program, they have an offer. So then they go directly to their job. Uh, so um, if we consider, for example, what other, I mean, um, organizations are saying about our program, we are also proud to say about our 10-year ROI, uh, that is almost $1 million. It, mean, it means that then after our program, after coming to our program and, and graduation, then you have this kind of impact in your return on investment, which is great. So they don't be obsessed about the tuition. Uh, but then think more about the mid-term, long-term, how this program can match, uh, can, can shape your future career, your future life, which is all these figures are based on real outcomes um, of our program. We are um, a boutique program, a small program of four students. We are so dedicated to the students, um, I mean, um, paths, so they win electives uh, with different uh, options at MIT but also in terms of uh, job outcomes. So, I mean, how they, the students and the graduates impact in the real supply chain arena with all these jobs. We are super proud about this, but this is thanks, um, thanks to our SEM uh, team, especially in career development, and also your, your great profiles of, of the students, yeah. So, uh, yeah, kind of jobs that we can find uh, um, in, in, in with, with our, I mean, offers. So, so then here you can see tech companies working with Google, Apple, Amazon, of course. Uh, some, uh, I mean, very advanced, mature startups as well. Uh, but also in consulting, consulting is a hot, I mean, um, job search now. Uh, and then as you can see here, this is a small percentage, which, and they are paying high level salaries but they're good also experiential learning um, uh, um, opportunities there. So these are the future uh, featured uh, job roles here, uh, going from uh, I mean, consultants and associates, I mean, partners, 
but also doing to all these data science um, um, portfolio of uh, opportunities, operations, um, I mean, program managers, demand managers, forecasting inventory, but also to vice president um, all over the world. Yeah? So very good, very good outcomes as you can see here with all these results. So um, going now to um, then our, also our, I mean, impact. So we are very proud to say that then um, by the third year in a row, this 2023, actually it, it, it was announced last week, then we uh, have been ranked number one worldwide in mastering supply chain management in the ranking, that is the QS ranking. It's a very well known QS ranking worldwide. Um, so again, then you can take a look to the press release in order to see how they perceive us um, as a program, but also uh, Evit Universal ranking. They announced the rankings this weekend as well, in which uh, we have been named number one by, by for the seventh year, together with our programs at the MIT Global SK Network that I located all over the world. That also, I mean, you can apply to these excellent programs. So again, all the supply chain family in, in RMIT, but together with the scale programs, then we are creating a great, great impact all over the world in supply chain. So then um, going to the program uh, overview, then uh, then let's say, um, let, let's, let's compare with other different paths that you can follow. So you can decide if you want to be totally immersed in the in-person on-campus experience for 10 months. This is what you have here on your left. This is the supply chain management residential program. Hmm? Is Typically, early career supply chain professionals will have an average of four or five years of supply chain experience. And we want, I mean, supply chain experience or high potential in supply chain uh, um, profiles in our classes in order to, I mean, enhance all this experience in the class. Mm -hmm. um, we provide career development and this, this, with this path on your left, presidential, then you will be eligible for OPT STEM work authorization in the US. Hmm? Then if you have more advanced career, um, then you can go to the blended supply chain management program. It's an alternative pathway, is, is what we call a blended. It means that then you combine, I mean, the online MITx MicroMaster program in supply chain. So those that they have their credential, then they can use it to waive the full term from the residential, and then the blended will join directly in January. I will explain this in a minute. These are non-traditional students who um, maybe may not have a professional or academic background in supply chain areas. They can come to, to our program. And then the they will follow a five months on campus at MIT. Huh? So it's a combination of online on campus experience. The two Perhaps have exactly the same degree with the um, degree in applied sciences or the degree in engineering. Huh? So then, yeah, so two great ways of, of coming into our program. Hmm? So then um, this is what how we shape our value proposition, actually. Then this is our value proposition to develop world-class global leaders of course, the supply chain with an innovative MIT educational model. Mm -hmm. So then all these key words here have a meaning in how we shape our program, how to deploy the program, and how we also shape the after program with our career development um, support that we are providing you as a graduate and alumni. This is why uh, we are very proud to say that our alumni network is so powerful, but also so engaged with the program. They are coming back to our program to meet our students, to provide recruiting opportunities. So this is a great way of shaping the world of, of supply chain with global leaders. This is our intention. So now then... Um, Excellent. So I will do a deeper dive into um, 
the timeline of each of the programs to help uh, prospective students get a better feeling for the, the style of uh, education that you can experience. So first, our 10-month residential program starts with um, the application process, which begins now, with and then concludes with our onboarding process, which begins in May. Um, so you'll have some um, pre-work to do over the summer term, building your resume, and beginning to prepare for MIT. Uh, the fun part then begins in August with our orientation. Uh, it's a rather intensive two-week period where we have um, recruiting preparation. You begin to start uh, learning about the capstone opportunities we have, and then a very comprehensive analytical course. Following that, you dive right into classes in the fall term. So you get to navigate MIT and explore different class opportunities, both here within SCM, but also throughout the throughout the campus. So we have connections with the Sloan School of Management, um, the Schwarzman College of Computing, um, the Electrical Engineering and Computer Science. So there's a lot of opportunities for you to explore um, what MIT has to offer. Uh, throughout this time, you'll also be building on your capstone projects. Then we'll do um, in the January IEP period is when all of you will be able to connect with your scale counterparts. So these are students from across the scale global network uh, from uh, Spain, Luxembourg, China, uh, who will all descend upon MIT for a three week intensive period where you get to explore different topics in global supply chain management uh, and then present your research thus far in our research expo. Um, poster session, which is a great networking opportunity and really uh, one of the two key marquee events that we offer here at SCM. Uh, spring continues uh, much like the fall. Um, you'll have a deeper dive into supply chain classes. We'll have several electives that we'll cover um, in just a second. Uh, and then it all culminates um, in that magical time at the end of the year where you'll graduate in front of MIT's uh, Killian Court there. And then finally, the journey doesn't end there. As you continue throughout your career, you will all be an alumni of our program. Uh, and we'll hope that we'll have um, students return to give back to the program with job opportunities um, throughout their time. So the blended program um, offers similar characteristics, uh, but has a different starting point. So for the blended students, you will begin the MicroMasters program uh, with online classes. Um, you will start your admissions process at the same time um, right now, but there will be one additional component to begin developing a uh, capstone project proposal, which will be included in your application. Um, once you have that proposal and go through the application process, uh, the fall term for the blended students is more independent and remote, where you will be working with your team um, to develop your capstone scope um, and work more independently um, as you prepare for your journey here at MIT. Uh, then once you join in January, you will have a similar intensive orientation filled with um, analytical components, but as well as um, the finer details of professional development. Uh, and then you integrate right with the rest of the program, uh, joining the Scale Connect uh, program throughout the three weeks of January. Uh, the spring term looks identical for blended and residential students. Um, filled with um, classes, our study trek, career coaching, uh, and culminating with our research symposium at the end of May. And then just like the residential cohort, everybody moves to become graduates at the end. Um, so like I said, it's a different starting point, but same end point for both programs. Uh, in terms of the curriculum that we have to offer, these are some of the highlights that we have available. Um, our fall term subjects for the residential students, um, which also are very similar to some of the content that the blended students receive online. Um, so things like analytical methods, logistic systems, financial analysis are integral to our uh, program. Additionally, we have electives in analysis, supply chain management, and general management that students will take throughout the time here. Um, IEP is our January term where we have two classes um, as well. And then finally, in the spring term, uh, we have more machine learning content, um, more refining of your capstone project, uh, and then additionally, just time for you to work on your capstone projects. Uh, and with that, I just have this slide to highlight some of our education offerings if Maria wants to just comment on um, what we have to offer. Okay, as we mentioned, we want to customize your journey here. And this is the way you're customizing the journey with different electives that are typically offered in spring, 
uh, uh, in supply chain management. So then going from, uh, uh, again, uh, more topics and more um, um, in supply chain finance, but for example, if you want to uh, go to humanitarian logistics, or maybe to specialize in retail and omnichannel, or maybe to go with sustainability, so then we can combine, for example, the sustainability supply chain management course with a certificate on sustainability delivered by a known school of management here at MIT. So then you can really customize your journey in different ways. I, in supply chain management, of course, this is the purpose of our program, but also with all the topics that you can combine with the school uh, of engineering, with the school of management here at MIT. So your, your journey could be very different in each of the different profiles of the students, which is great as something that typically they do, you will um, and then value a lot here. Mm -hmm. Also the capstone project. The capstone project is, is a key component of our program. Our program is so intensive that then we are putting different layers of experiential learning. One of the layers is the capstone project. It's a real problem with a real company that is bringing their problem and a challenge. We shape the problem in order to be able to solve the problem in this 10 month program, both residential and blended, follow exactly the same timeline with the capstone project. This is one example in which uh, two, typically two students advised by one or two researchers from MIT and together with the company, then they offered a solution. In this case, it was a visionary solution on how to compare the drone delivery systems in last mile delivery with truck track delivery, right? So then they follow different modules as you can see on your left uh, bottom. So different models of combination with drone and track. And then they develop uh, some simulation that will be helpful for the company to decide what to do in the in the future. Uh, so then again, this is a typical case of what to do in the capstone project, uh, starting in September, finishing in May, together with all the different courses and uh, and applications in our supply chain management program. And so with that, I will take a few minutes to highlight our application process and some tips to get uh, applicants starting to think about um, the process. So to begin with, um, like each traditional graduate application, we have several components that are uh, mandatory uh, with some flexibility as well, though. Um, so for example, the SCM residential program, we do require either the GMAT or GRE, um, but as an alternative, we also accept our own SC0X supply chain analytics course, uh, which is a great option if you have additional time to learn just a little bit more about the program or about supply chain management. Um, everybody will be required to have a written statement of objectives, uh, video statement, which is very integral, and I'll mention on the next topic on the next page. Uh, a resume with at least two years of work experience, two letters of recommendation, and then your undergraduate transcript. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, the blended program, since it does require the online MicroMasters prior to enrollment, uh, you'll have to share your performance on the five uh, online courses plus the final exam, uh, and then spend a little additional time outlining your capstone project that, um, that you will propose with the application. Uh, this is integral for the blended program because we need to be able to see that you can really hit the ground running uh, and begin that project uh, remotely before joining. So some application tips to keep in mind that we really like to stress uh, that help build a successful application. Uh, first is the video statement. Um, it's only two minutes long, but it serves as a really important introduction to the admissions committee. Uh, we want to see that you can demonstrate your authenticity and personality, uh, and it's really almost a substitution as a as a preliminary interview. Um, so really take some time to interweave your personal experiences and professional accomplishments, uh, because that will help highlight your application to the admissions committee. Um, make sure to be yourself. Definitely avoid reading a script. Um, we want to just see as if you were talking to us naturally. Uh, in a, in a Zoom webinar just like this. Uh, you'll use your own webcam and recording devices and our application system will walk you through the steps to do um, a few tests uh, and you'll record directly in the system. Uh, one additional component that uh, is important for, um, for us is work experience. We are a professional program and do require a minimum of two years. Uh, ideally, we will see 
work experience ranges from three to seven years of experience, especially for the residential program, uh, maybe a little bit higher for the blended program. Um, but that experience is key in order to um, share your or share your experience with the cohort. Uh, we want to be able to see a resume that's clearly laid out and identifies this experience with dates, key accomplishments, roles, companies. Um, all of this may seem obvious, but it's very important that we see that clearly laid out in the resume uh, because that is one thing we reference um, throughout the throughout the admissions review process. So one point we back here, Robert, if you don't mind. So work experience. So the key question is, do we expect work experience in supply chain management? is not mandatory, right? So then it will be, I mean, well appreciated if you have experience in supply chain. Supply chain is a very broad topic. We can go from purchasing procurement, you can go to uh, manufacturing operations, logistics, warehouse, transportation, uh, also consultancy and supply chain and operations. So then it's very uh, broad, but also we accept the students that has a high potential in supply chain that have, they have not collected the experience supply chain so far. So don't be afraid of applying if you are really motivated by supply chain. Yeah? I wanted to highlight it, I think, I think it's important. Yeah, definitely an important fact. Uh, one other major consideration that we know um, applicants are always keeping in mind are fellowship opportunities and funding. Uh, so the FCM program offers several uh, internal departmental fellowships. We have skill um, scholars fellowships for for students participating in our global scale uh, network, and then specific fellowships for advancing women, um, and plus many more additional, uh, over 20 additional uh, competitive fellowships that we nominate our, our students for. Uh, up to 77% of uh, students from the past year received some sort of fellowship award. Uh, it's important to note that our fellowships rarely cover the full amount of the program, so you will have to take um, you will have to commit funds yourself. Uh, we know that the program is uh, an investment in your future, so you'll have to weigh those options. Uh, but we are there to help um, bridge the gap just a little bit with our fellowship opportunities. Uh, so make sure to apply in early rounds, round one and round two for residential, and round one for blended, um, to be able to be considered for the most competitive fellowships which are offered throughout MIT. So yeah, and, and another remark here, uh... Um, so then when you will approach the tuition, so think in the midterm, long term, right? Okay, you are going to invest in tuition. We are helping, supporting financially with 77% of the students, right? But also think in the long term. So then 97% of the students get an offer before graduation. So then all the return of investment starts even before leaving the program. And also the ROI in 10 years is almost 1 million. Right. So again, then think strategically. Don't think isolated. Okay, how I'm gonna afford the tuition? But of course, you need to deal with that. But also think in the midterm, long term, when you are making your strategy about what program you want to follow. Because then, again, after ten months of our program, then you will be start in your exponential growth. Right. So then think strategically about it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, so as you plan for the application process over the next couple of months, uh, we just wanted to highlight our deadlines here. We have three rounds of deadlines for residential. Uh, this is really just to give you the ability to plan your time accordingly. Um, maybe we know many MBA applications and other programs offer multiple deadlines um, just to help you gauge um, the time that makes the most sense for you. Um, there's no highly different, there's no competitive difference uh, between the rounds. We manage that on our own. Uh, and then blended, our two deadlines are corresponding with the CFX exam from the MicroMasters team. Um, so if you have any questions on any of those, feel free to always reach out to us. And then finally, I'll turn it over to Maria uh, to highlight uh, just our two final takeaways from the program um, over the MIT experience uh, and why you should yeah. join us. Yeah, no, for, I mean, we want to enhance your MIT experience, right? And then we have different channels to do that. Uh, for example, then we are having a track in the spring, beautiful track in which we, we visit real operations. We connect with alumni in other parts of the world in order to enhance your MIT experience so you can take advantage when you are leaving Boston. Uh, also, you have a lot of team bonding activities before starting during the orientation is your uh, top right, uh, I mean, picture. 
Um, so also the MIT itself, MIT is not only the brand, it's much more than that. It's the experience and then the, the challenge in the entrepreneurship, uh, I mean, spirit that we want to promote here. And also the opportunity for connecting you with a great community of different stakeholders, not only the faculty, instructors, researchers, but also your mates here in the residential with the blended, blended residential, with the scale and with the alumni. So a huge potential of growth along all your um, different stages that we wanted to, to emphasize here. Mm -hmm. But also MIT will go to the next one and then and we, we have some facts in order to, to, to emphasize all this experience. So then, I mean, the worldwide has recognized MIT with different Nobel laureates, as you can see here on your left. MIT is really strong in computing and the future of AI. All of us, we really believe in the future of AI, artificial intelligence. And this also, we, we build different opportunities if you're interested about this future. Um, but also the, my preferred fact uh, here is uh, in your uh, right-hand side, uh, then MIT, if we measure the global impact of alumni of MIT, then we are creating the 10th largest GDP in the world. So, and then you can be part of this impact. Uh, and then you will see that then, uh, I mean, after coming to MIT, then your life will change, your mind will change and your future impact will change based on the fact only, right? So then we are very proud of this, of that, but then all these figures, I mean, reinforce this, this impact as well. So yeah, here's some pictures. So, then, so here, uh, this is a beautiful picture about where MIT is on your uh, left top corner. Then the, all the sport facilities, but then we are uh, there in that picture close to the uh, Charles River. Um, close to the MIT, just crossing crossing the bridge fellowship, uh, uh, um, the, the, uh, um, I mean, Longfellow Bridge going to the downtown is beautiful. We are only two uh, two stops uh, uh, on the on the subway to to Harvard. Um, so then different pictures about all the um, experience of the MIT combining modern creativity, as you can see in your right top. Uh, uh, corner, uh, yeah. So then, oh, oh, this is you will experience on this while you will be here with us uh, in Boston, yeah. And um, so, um, some key facts uh, about um, uh, MIT. So then, um, uh, here is only ten months program compared with MBA. For example, typically it's two years program. We only uh, have ten month intensive, very intensive program but very productive in terms of your outcomes. Mm -hmm. If you go to the blended, you can train yourself in advance with your MicroMaster um, online education, and then come here just to double loop all this experiential learning and then take the experience in a shorter, very intensive five months program. Um, um, considering the um, all the um, MPVs or net present value ROI approach, if you compare MBA, Again, two years of tuition, two years being outside of your job salary compared with our program. 10 months of tuition, 10 months out of the salary, but very high percentage of, uh, of um, receiving a job offer with high salaries. If you make the math, definitely, then our program with a specialization in supply chain is definitely more, uh, I mean, um, return on investment uh, if you compare. Um, with the residential program, OPT STEM certified. So it means that then if you are coming from outside US, you will have three years of US work authorization for international students. Um, then we are a boutique program, a small cohort of 20 students where we deploy our experience to your needs, to your profile. This is very important with all the career development recruiting, but also your electives. Mm -hmm. And also then being outside only Boston, also with the tracks, Panama, um, but also with the scale. I want to also to emphasize that, for example, if you are, um, imagine uh, MIT um, X MicroMaster um, uh, cert certificate holder, and then you want to come to the residential, you can do that as well. 
actually you will you will have more opportunities to go with your electives if you come with a MicroMaster. So it's a path that you can follow as well. Yeah. So then again, not only residential blended, but also maybe you can come with a MicroMaster to the residential as well. Yeah. Excellent. And with that, um, we can spend the remainder of our webinar here, um, joined with our current uh, student ambassadors, uh, Ritesh Ray and Jorge Oliver. Um, so they'll help answer some of the questions that we've been um, that have been posted in the Q and A. Um, Maria, myself, and our program assistant John have also been uh, answering uh, online, and we will be happy to answer more. So with that, I'll turn it over to our student ambassadors just to say hello and introduce yourself before we get started. Yeah. Um, hi, everyone. Am I audible? Yes. Sounds okay, great. great. Um, thank you, Robert. Thank you, Maria, for that session. And thank you for inviting us for this session. Um, hi, everyone. A little background about me. Uh, I am born and brought up in India. And currently, it's been two months into this program, uh, SM program of class of 2023. Before coming into this program, I worked in a startup uh, in the uh, supply chain department. I worked in building the supply chain. And as the company grew, I focused my role in the strategic sourcing of the uh, supply chain. And uh, after six years, I realized that I need to pivot to uh, a program where I can have deep insights in supply chain, given the, uh, uh, given the uh, intention I have in learning more into supply chain. And for that, I just went on Google and typed number one supply chain program. And I have the answer, MIT. So that's why here I am. And it's been two months, but I can't explain how uh, amazing it has been. And I look forward to enjoying the rest of the program. Yeah, over to you, Orke. Hello, everyone. My name is Jorge Oliver. I am from, from Peru. I've been involved in supply chain for more than 10 years leading logistics operations in the diverse industries, such as steel, construction, and retail. Uh, mainly in, in retail, I have the opportunity to lead large teams in distribution centers. Uh, my journey maybe is different. I started this becoming a MicroMaster holder. I did a MicroMaster program. Um, from, from then I was like, uh, I was very engaged with the MIT met educational methodology because it's different that I, I, I have done before, really, really different because just theory and then you have to apply it. So it's very practical. That was very, very uh, useful for me. So fr from there I was, or oh, maybe this is a path that I have to follow because I, I've been looking for many years where, where, I, where, where I want to study. So that, that totally engaged with me and also the sense of community. From the MicroMaster, I, I, was the first time that I felt that sense of community. I was a community teaching assistant twice. So I had opportunity to work with people with a worldwide team as we have nowadays in our cohort. We have 16 countries here in our cohort. We have a diverse team at different backgrounds. Uh, yeah, we have been here for two months, but uh, it, it, it's been really, really great, really, really intensive. And regarding the, the job applications, don't worry. You know, I, I was very, very surprised that even, even in the first week, some people were applying to jobs. So it's really, really, really fast. So well, yeah, happy, happy to, to be here with you guys. <clears throat> Thank you very Excellent. much. Still Thank you so much. Great to have you here. Yeah. Uh, great. So I will go ahead and dive into some of the questions we have in the QA. Um, some I'll just answer myself or some I'll pose to everyone here. Um, first, I think we, Maria answered this um, pretty sufficiently is what are the strengths uh, comparing the our program to an MBA program? I think the, the biggest highlight is just the time commitment um, and the ROI on that. So you're only here for 10 months versus two years with an MBA, um, but your outcomes will be either similar or even better uh, depending on the type of job you go into. So I it's really the, yeah, go for it, Maria. Yeah, no, and I would like to add the, the network. So then our network in terms of companies that, for example, you are working in the capstone project, our labs 
all our labs, our research labs are in supply chain. But the, again, the alumni, they are working in supply chain. So they will support your developing supply chain. We also work on developing global leadership. We work on developing analytics, right? So then uh, that are areas that are covered by MBA, but all in the supply chain uh, operations. But if you have a motivation about whatever kind of topic that is very management oriented, you can go with your elective, right? And for example, some students are taking courses like living in ambiguity. It is a beautiful topic that typically is for MBAs, but then you can take it being here in our program as an elective, right? So then all, all, all close. <laughs> Excellent. Um, so another question uh, posed, uh, and maybe Ritesh and all, and Jorge, you can um, clear, you can mention your experience. Um, do the students co uh, cooperate or participate in other research labs, or are you um, confined to just one? Um, I will say for our capstone projects, we do assign students uh, based off of their general interest in our available projects. Uh, but Jorge and Ritesh, maybe you have experience just in your classes or with your colleagues. Um, in terms of other offerings that you've taken advantage of? Yeah, uh, so thank you for that question, Robert. Uh, yeah, so when you are here at MIT in this program, you are not limited to only the capstone project or you know a certain number of projects. As I think Robert already explained, you, are, you can take electives from what all possible handouts we have here. And if you are capable enough, if you uh, if you qualify the prerequisites, you can go ahead discuss with the professor. If professor allows, uh, and Robert and Maria allows, you definitely can go ahead with any of the uh, projects all across uh, MIT. So you're not confined to only a certain number of projects within this program, but you can reach out to other programs projects as well. The only thing is you need to qualify for the prerequisites for those programs and projects. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Also, I, I resonate with British uh, answer. Uh, yeah, that's that's true. We have different different options. Also, just to build up so from that uh, answer, uh, we have uh, different certifications here. So we have analytical certification, certificate certification. We have sustainability. We have leadership certification. We have something relating to health certification. And when you when you follow that path, you have to do some kind of projects re related to that topic. So also that's really interested if you want to do more projects regarding other topics, and that will definitely will increase your knowledge here. Yeah, that's true, and that's one of the great things about uh, the program and about MIT is when you your tuition covers uh, in theory unlimited number of classes. Um, the the upper limit is just what Maria and I advise you on, um, but also that means that you can take classes throughout um, the campus so you're not limited um, as well. You're only limited by your imagination and the, the physical number of hours you have in a day. <laughs> um, and also so we have, uh, the mentorship program in which you have a mentor in which you can uh, pose your questions. The mentor can help you to connect with your motivations. So imagine that you are motivated for humanitarian logistics. We have a strong lamp here. So then you can go to Dr. Jarod Gonsal to say, yes, I got I mean, I want to connect here. So then he can help you to connect. He can, uh, maybe you can contribute to the lab if then if there is enough, uh, I mean, interest and interest and, and bandwidth. So again, there are different ways, yeah. And another great question that we have um, specific for our student ambassadors, um, assuming both, if you have your micromasters degree, uh, or MacMaster's um, credential, uh, what made you choose SCMR over SCMB? Um, what, was there any factor that weighed in your decision making? Yeah, so um, I'll go ahead with that question. Thank you, Robert, again. Uh, for international students, uh, specifically, I think it's, if, if you're looking for working in US, I think uh, the qualification for STEM is that you should at least have 10 plus months of uh, uh, academic uh, experience here. And for that, I think residential program qualifies and blended does it. And also to focus as um, what Robert has confirmed that for residential program, minimum two years of experience is required. And I mean, it'll be adding uh, value in your uh, application process. And for blended, it's more of higher number of years of experience. 
Uh, maybe Robert can elaborate more on that. But uh, that's what I feel what differentiates between residential and blended. Okay. Yeah, for me, um, I have family. I have two, two children. So before I came here, we have to thought really, really uh, to be sure about our decision. So I believe that we, we, we did the, the best decision. We made the, the, the best decision. So it, for me, it was like, if you want to boost my career, Nowadays, we need global supply chain leaders. Um, I mainly have my experience just in my country. So in order to scope, to widen my scope in supply chain, I was like, okay, I went to study at MIT and also I want to have that experience in the field, in the industry. So I want to take advantage of the OPT. I want to combine that, you know, the theory, the practical with the real experience in industry. So that for me, uh, was was why I, I I made the decision to to do the the residential program instead of the, the instead of the blend. Yeah. <clears throat> if if I Just... can add also uh, our career development office here offers career development for both programs, residential and blended. Uh, so then, but it, of course, then the OPT makes you uh, in the US more. I mean, definitely eligible. But then um, again, if you are thinking about looking for a job outside the US, definitely our alumni network is really strong all over the world. Remember that our uh, value proposition is to develop global leaders. So then again, uh, we have alumni all over the world, Europe, Asia, um, I mean, Africa, and, uh, and of course US. Uh, so again, the career development support is for both programs. Just to add to that, um, given a chance between spending 10 months in MIT versus four months in MIT, I would always choose 10 months because you get to have more immersive experience here. So yeah, that's it. Yes, also to add to Maria's uh, answer, yeah, we have a web page of alumni here at MIT. It's really, really useful. You can just fill your information and that's all for everyone to match with different profiles. And you can arrange meetings with people with from I know from different companies, Google, Amazon, you, you name it. So um, they're very, very accessible. And that, that's really great because they share with you all their experiences. They can give you advice. So it, the sense of community, as, as I said before, is, is really, really great. Great. And I think Maria commented just a little bit on our um, scale global network, but one question in particular was um, how does the curriculum relate uh, across the different uh, scale networks for applicants who may be considering applying to MIT, but also our campuses in Zaragoza, uh, Luxembourg, and uh, China. And actually, Maria herself is probably an expert on that um, as she worked in Spain. Um, so maybe you just have a comment on the scale yeah. global network. I was the executive director of Seracos Logistics Center, so I know very well. I have been working hard to 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 to, to build the the Seracosa curriculum. So there are some similarities and some uh, uh, I mean special strengths in each of the programs, right? It's not that one is better than the other. So then, in terms of Seracosa, then uh, they have common uh, courses together with what we are teaching here in Boston. Mm -hmm. Uh, so then um, and different also timelines. So then the degree is different. It's to become a Saragossa is a master of engineering. Here we, our master program is master of applied science. In some particular cases, then you can take the master of engineering degree from our program here at MIT. Huh? But in some particular cases, you need to do a thesis and be more applied uh, research oriented. Uh, than the master of applied science, but you can do it as well. So again, different particular, um, I mean, elements. So then, for example, Saragossa is very, very strong in the connection with industry in Europe and Switzerland and uh, uh, also UK, uh, uh, I mean, Spain. Uh, again, so then again, some pros and cons. Huh? And then the degree is, is different, is conferred by different institutions. So then, yeah, you can take a look to the SCALE website in order to see what are the, uh, the pros of, of every program, yeah. Hmm. Excellent. Uh, let's see, any other 
uh, questions to answer here. Uh, well, one is just um, about machine learning and data science. Um, since we are an engineering program, I think that is a, an important question. Um, what sort of experience might you need um, in order to join the program? And what's learned here? And is there a preferred language or tool? I think there's opinions on all of those. <laughs> Maria, maybe if you want to start. Yeah, yeah. They, uh, of course, I mean, we don't want to be a master of analytics, right? We want to be a master in supply chain. But of course, in supply chain nowadays, you need analytics as a, a tool. Um, so, for example, then we are building our analytics curriculum when you start from the very, very, very beginning with the orientation. It's kind of analytics bootcamp in which we are teaching Python. Our preferred language is Python. So we are building upon Python in terms of libraries, in terms of, for example, combining Python with Gurobi optimization, right? So then we, we cannot teach everything. So then we are more, um, I mean, focus on Python. Why? Because the companies then prefer Python as the common language. But in some courses, for example, then, uh, uh, I mean, in 260, um, then um, it is, is um, um, I mean, the, the, the coding is R. Uh, so there are different, uh, again, courses that are building upon different coding. So then the question is, being a global leader, I am expecting to, to, to learn how to code, to code in Python. Our approach is that at least you need to acquire this language in order to communicate with your teams. Maybe you will have some data scientist teams, uh, members, so then you need to understand the language in order to be able to communicate. But maybe you will not be coding all the time. Or maybe then you are really willing to approach the analytics um, path then you uh, you will, will be using more Python. Again, so this is our approach, but then we firmly believe on mature learning analytics methods that help uh, supply chain management in forecasting, in last mile delivery. This is a reality, it's, 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 it's being more and more present in the jobs right now. So this is why we want to build the knowledge and you can build different paths. You can build on the math, behind uh, all these analytics, or maybe you can build more on the applications of all the analytics. So we were aware that there are different, I mean, stages in, in terms of analytics, yeah. Mm -hmm. And then Jorge and Ritesh, from the student perspective, um, you, you two are probably both more prepared than most since you've taken the MicroMasters, but were there any, was there anything specific that helps you prepare for the program? Yes, uh, I think, um, I didn't do the MicroMasters, but yes, uh, I did the SC0X module, and that really gave me a perspective of what to expect from this program, what kind of modules are going to be taught. That's just a starting uh, point, the SC0X. Uh, in particular, I think Python is one tool that I think before coming to this program, people should be aware of the students' uh, need to learn it. When I say need to learn it, that doesn't mean you need to learn 100% of what Python is, but you should be aware of the interface. You should be aware of the uh, typical statements, typical syntaxes, so that when you come here uh, and when the course courses are taught, uh, the modules are being taught, it is easier for you to grab and digest it. Because here, since the program is 10 months, uh, the program is not going to focus on how to use Python, but it is going to focus on how to implement your analytical skills with Python as a tool, right? So basics of Python is what, it's one of the prerequisites also, once you uh, get into this program, you need to go through that. So I think if you start working on Python right from now, you'll be at a very better position uh, while doing the analytical skill set, while developing any analytical skill sets here in these courses. Yeah, that's from my side, thank you. Yeah, from my side, I, I, I have never called Coding, coded before, so for, for me it's new. I am I am I am learning, but yeah, I resonate with Ritesh answer. It, it will be great if you can just take some introduction courses just to know just the the, the basic things of, of coding. And regarding the, the MicroMaster, yeah, it, it 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 will be useful if you can take some some courses from the MicroMaster. It's going to give you the foundation that is going to be useful. No further supply also for other elective courses that you want to take because it's very they provide you with a very diverse knowledge so that that will be great but yeah don't worry about about coding uh, 
you have to understand just yes, that the logic behind as as always as any software as any formula so don't, don't worry about that you you will be fine and actually yeah we provide once you are accepted we provide an online online course just to enter to python so if you don't know python no worries this is not going to limit absolutely your your admission here right so then only we will equip you with some intro right in order just to be prepared but then again is not the core 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 of, of our program our core is about supply chain management topics and then you can customize your preference so if you don't want to go be strong with python no worries right and then definitely you will succeed here yeah and great i think two final questions that i'll wrap it up with are just about student life uh, from um two of the uh uh viewers one is um where do you live on campus and sort of what um what experience have you had there and then the other is um for those who might have families um how accessible is cambridge um so i can comment a little bit on that one as well but um just in terms of your experience so far jorge and Pratesh. I, I i would like to go first because yeah. i have to leave i have another webinar regarding to the micromaster also so yeah the, the life here is is great as i said i came with my family we have a lot of activities here. We are living in a MIT building. You have a lot of MIT buildings for families, for singles. Don't worry about the housing. You will find a housing here at MIT. Don't worry about that because I was worried when I was a, before I came here. So yeah, the, the life here is amazing. You can do whatever you want. Uh, here at, at, at Cambridge, uh, so far the weather is, is, is okay. So if you like to jogging, bike, we have a lot of uh, sense of sports here, a lot of soccer fields, whatever, you, you, you name it, you can do what, whatever you want here. So the life is here. Great. Uh, yeah. Well, so, sorry, guys, I have to, yeah. to leave. It was a pleasure to, to be here with you. No problem. And actually, we do have to uh, wrap up the webinar now since we um, have uh, another engagement after this. So Ritesh, thank you for joining as well. Um, yeah. So I will close out with just saying thank you um, with our contact information here. Um, for anybody who has questions, feel free to always reach out to SCM-admissions and we'll share this webinar on our website um, shortly. Uh, thank you again and uh, good luck with your applications. Thank you very much. We would love to review your application. So please don't hesitate to ask questions and to, to apply to our program. Thank you. Bye.